Hello friends, welcome back. Today, we're going to create a state in the user interface. Once you define a component's initial state, you can display any part of, the, of it in the user interface that is rendered. If a component is stateful, it will always have access to the data in states in its render method. You can access the data with this.state. If you want to access a state value within the return of the re render method, you have to enclose the values in curly braces. State is one is the is one of the most powerful features of components in React. It allows you to track important data in your app and render a user interface in response to change in this data. If your data changes, your user interface will change. What does that mean? That means like if the name changes while your page is open, it will reflect immediately. You don't need to require a page refresh. I think that would be an easy way of kind of saying that. Uh, React uses what is called a virtual DOM. DOM stands for Document Object Model <clears throat> to, cr to keep track of the changes behind the scenes. When state data updates, it triggers a re-render of the components using that data, including child components that received the data as prop. React updates the actual DOM, but only when necessary. where necessary. This means you don't have to worry about changing the DOM. You simply declare what the user interface should look like. Note that if you make a component stateful, no other components are aware of its state. Its state is completely encapsulated or local to the component, unless you pass the state data to a child component as props. This notion of encapsulation, in, encapsulated state is very important because it allows you to write certain logic that you have, certain logic, then have that logic contained and isolated in one place in your code. So one way to think about this is if you're using a Facebook and somebody's sending you private messages in the little tab thing down here, it doesn't affect the way that your newsfeed is operating or whatever. Um, I think that that's an easy way to think about this. <clears throat> So, in the code editor, my component is already stateful. My component is already stateful. What does that mean? Well, from what we can tell right now, it's, it has this dot state. It's got the name in there. So, we want to define an h1 tag in the components render method, which renders the value of name from the component state. Oh, okay, cool. So, we, in here, we're just going to go uh, h1, and then have a closing tag, and in here, we're going to say... Uh, this dot state dot name. Cool. Now free code camp is up here. No, the H1 should only render the value from state and nothing else. In JSX, any code that you write within the curly braces will be treated as JavaScript. So to access the value from state, just enclose the reference in the curly brackets. So think about it. What, the, what this is saying is this, which means the component that you built from here, this and then it's saying this.state. And so this is actually comes to the constructor. And then this.state gets you to this object. So once you get to the, the name, you, you, it says name. And then that renders out uh, free code camp. And this is, again, an object. So you could say uh, year. And you could do some JavaScript thing in here, like new date uh, dot get full year. And if you pass this in here, you could say uh, year. And then in curly brackets, write this dot state dot year. And you'd get 2020. Because, and you so then you're using JavaScript to render a stateful thing. Now, say uh, I wrote this, I did this application. If I did this process in, tw in 2019 or in 2021, this dot state dot year would still re render the pr cr proper year. So we have what's called a stateful component. So uh, once again, this is not necessary for you if you're just looking to pass the test. This is the cleanest solution that you should probably write if you want to uh, wrap it up. And so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.